Hello guys, this is, <laughs> I'm not a Serafim Uch, I'm a professional illustrator from uh, Belgrade. It is the second long, the first long but a second weekend in isolation and it started yesterday and Friday, today is Saturday. So uh, I wanted to update you on my um, gouache illustration mental activities because I left it for uh, several days for uh, doing commissions because they're uh, more important. And I always uh, like thinking that I could skip one or two hours a day in between uh, commissions, but commission work, but it's just constantly on my mind. And I realize I want to change a little bit because I can, I think I broke the ice on gouache and I realized how forced with small strokes and uh, fine, super thin brushes are, um, what, what does that do, uh, what that does to a painting is killing that uh, expression in a way and uh, postures and everything that you want to say and, it, and the volume. It looks more poster-like, which I love, but I wanted to bring more volume and less to take care of volume as, well, uh, as much uh, as I love to deal with details at the end. But that goes at the end and I didn't know how and then I realized it's uh, then I went through the, this like I think I finished four by now I have one more finish I'll show you uh, I finished it this morning um, sure. uh, so this is a kind of finished artwork and uh, I need I just need a big uh, big brush to to make that volume pop up and uh, to set up the priorities which are usually set up at the beginning but because i was so messy and trying a uh, lots of things at the same time on the same illustration it looked really messy and uh, i wasn't sure why and now i understand why so as i started a few more i'm starting a few more uh, this is the chef that served us in Japan. He was so cool and I kind of still like it, but I, I realized I could um, start first from the lighting and I, I saw how the quality of water you start makes it look so fresh at, at the end. You sh I should not go over every little uh, field that it was watery and then turn it into a full paste. It just gives something so, it, it makes it so alive, like a watercolor. But when you work on gouache, you just think, oh, I will go over it and it will just be for reference at the beginning. But no, if you capture some of these watery effects at the beginning, especially now <laughs> that I'm gonna try, I hope we will make it together. Um, if, you, if, if you try most of the things at the end, it's the volume that matters and the general impression of what you wanna do. And I totally put that in a second, like, let's say it was secondary these days for me <laughs> because I was wrestling with the technique. And now I'm just using the, the entire morning, like ugh, entire, <laughs> entire two hours. By now I'm uh, using just big brush. I don't use smaller brushes, uh, maybe middle one. I just tried on this one. And this is strange couple from Harajuku. And uh, oh, for these super small uh, details on the nose, I just I can use medium or for the flower, but generally I just want to work with a big brush. And I also remembered a very nice interview with Paula Zane, uh, made by Bobby Chu, because he's making all the most awesome people being interviewed by him and talking about their routines. And he, I just remember, he taught about some uh, Prince of uh, Egypt, uh, uh, the, the, the animation they were doing, and he did the background painting. And uh, uh, his mentor, I don't know, I don't remember the name from the interview uh, he mentioned, but he just took away all of his small brushes and he left him with the biggest brush ever. <laughs> and I didn't know I, if I could pull that, on this small canvas, this is like, I think A5 or something. Uh, I mentioned it in a previous video. So yeah, let's do this, and I think it's uh, it's going well. I can even 
break the ice on the quantity of work per day in just a few hours I can uh, stimulate myself by starting with watery um, let's say brown grayish or bluish uh, toning and then go with gouache uh, wherever I want to fill in with the paste and uh, build the volume from there so yeah let's see what happens <laughs> yeah stay tuned if you like the story <laughs> thanks this happens is just uh, if you know what you want to put where and you focus on uh, only on the volume and what is darker and lighter I suppose this doesn't make a big deal just take some uh, some paper uh, and take uh, away the, the, the rest that you don't need um, but yeah basically this is uh, has, this guy has some complicated hair, like a punk hair, so uh, a little bit <laughs> an alternative approach when it comes to hairdressing. And he has uh, this huge bucking birds. I don't know if that's the name in English, I hope so. Uh, yeah, please. So even if I make mistake or just start too dark, it's still there is still a gouache I don't have to worry and this brush is um, let's see. this brush is uh, number six oh, let's see if I can zoom yeah it's Windsor and Newton Cotman it's uh, uh, it's a recommendation from my um, friend uh, and calling I went to uh, to Paris together and she was using these and I never used them. I always use like uh, flach uh, like um, how to say uh, square brushes I don't know why for acrylics and she only uses these so this is number six this is pretty huge for this kind of format and on the other hand it's it's not I just uh, uh, it has a nice it's important for that's why Cotman is pretty good with brushes um, that Cotman series because it's uh, basically a watercolor brush and it has a pretty nice tip um, it's very important that it's a quality brush at least for me so I don't get nervous <laughs> because uh, the tip is going out is uh, worn out uh, very quickly uh, if you use very cheap brushes maybe maybe there is always a way to find some something like a brush that is cheap but it turns out good uh, let me know if there is a, uh, but on at the end of the day it's not I think um, I think brushes are not too expensive what to invest if they are lasting longer so yeah so in for this one I'm thinking yeah I think this will be something like a something like um, well, the the light from this side, and then I would just uh, put highlights on this edge here, and uh, yeah, I think that will be fine. Um, yeah, definitely has a little bit of a beard. This reminds me of my very old characters from high school. Um, yeah, I probably implemented some of that. It's still somewhere in my mind. Uh, I didn't draw anything for myself for a very long time. So this probably since every time I travel, I make a sketch or, or um, two. Um, but usually, I when I was traveling, it was very dynamic, and uh, it's different when you when you're constantly moving. And then in Paris, I made a lot of sketches that were quite clumsy. If you, if but it was a big revelation for me. It was um, big, uh, like a, like a huge warm up for me. And uh, seeing the beauty of diversity in Paris that inspired me to just uh, try expanding my visual library uh, through drawing, not just through observing. And that was beautiful. And uh, yeah. And now in Japan, it was like my my brain brain exploded. I mean, yeah. So 
this is what I did while we were talking it's like a five minutes and it's still um, quite valuable even though I do it so random and think about <laughs> more what I talk about it's still something that uh, yeah and the edges um, with gua sha are so uh, very textured especially if you want to make a full paste but with water you can make on this very nice 100% uh, cotton paper at least but usually what the watercolor gives you opportunity to make sharp edges for the beginning and then you can capture them through the um, all through the process and uh, yeah, uh, preserve them during the entire process and uh, uh, hold on onto them when the drawing is kind of um, um, overwhelmed with colors already you cannot see the drawing anymore so yeah yeah let's do it let's do this oh also what I want to say um, yeah I should tell you I have to look this in person so uh, I also realize it really helps um, that uh, when you underpaint it like um, more like toning and you put a blue or green or whatever color that is kind of neutral but it can be an overall color scheme up front if you use the color that will be more and less present all over the painting so it's a win-win I, I, I really I don't know how I didn't start it right away but I just wanted to take care of all the details from the start I wanted to look perfect from the start and that's what ruined <laughs> um, that's why they don't look so fresh at the end but I'm still satisfied I still posted them on Instagram I think every progress is really good to show to everybody and not post only perfect things um, but also yeah don't uh, I don't want to saturate uh, anyone on Instagram or YouTube with some uh, shit that I do but something that is uh, average and it's work in progress is always good to show because nobody Nobody is perfect. Maybe so, I, I know many people that are, <laughs> but I'm not. So yeah, uh, enjoy watching the the, the, the time, life, time lapse for today and probably tomorrow. And uh, yeah, see you later for the ending of this uh, isolation weekend vlog number two.
Hello guys, it's end of the isolation weekend. I wanted to finish this video by showing you the slow but sure progress on some pieces. The ugly stage and some nicer stage and some other illustrations. Um, and uh, one finished, um, <clears throat> kind of. I think this one is finished now. Looks, looks okay. Cat I love so far, and the dog was okay from the beginning. And I tried to uh, fight with the lady and the portrait today, and uh, trying to wrap it up. So I hope it paid off. Um, it's still, it's still a very uh, slow process, I would say. It's super slow, but honestly, I enjoyed. <laughs> I really enjoyed. And. Um, then uh, just uh, from the other day was something that I started like only toned and then I uh, put this red and black and um, pink somewhere so I started some kind of a toning here and uh, yeah this seems because it's uh, there are so many details details it can be super easy to finish by it, look, it looks finished easier than something simple, so I think um, this can look good right at the end, we'll see. And this one I started too dark, and so I'm, I was brightening the face today and um, adding some real colors, on, like a more natural color over toning um, the, the parrot and putting some, some face more um, skin color to the baby because it was toned only and so far I think it's a weird color scheme super weird uh, there's a little bit of turquoise but I think I think when I add some other colors um, oh sorry yeah that was a control uh, so when I add some more colors here it will look like a full color scheme but this was like a limited first start and this chef I wanted to keep it rough for as long as I can and whenever I feel some color belongs there to while I, while I was working on this one whenever some color was looking like I could um, use it on a chef or any other I would just uh, transfer for just I don't know a minute and put them there uh, I think this one will be very much of a good test for uh, how I do volume and how I understand the depth when it comes to his body and I think that's the main challenge here and I'm very I'm very satisfied I started working with the big brush because that's the biggest advantage and um, yeah, this is like adding some details today. I found many mistakes in drawing because as always I'm trying to rush uh, myself but uh, with, with any in, in any stage and now I'm trying to stop myself so uh, here uh, there are some like 10 mistakes uh, I found so I added here a color pencil for the, the, the cape and uh, here I added something that will kind of fix the problem and this is, I'll take this part away from the, 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 the toy, the, the vehicle toy and I love this one in the background um, but it pops up a lot, I think I have to put it more in the background so finishing this will be a real pleasure because I finally got um, to layer more patiently all the colors uh, and and uh, being more rich with color schemes um, when it comes to you know in the beginning is just it's a nicely mixed color but still it's violet it's blue and here I have um, many colors in violet put a little bit um, more transparent but it uh, gives some kind of uh, more realistic feeling, I guess. Uh, I really, really like this part here with her head. I like her uh, puffs. <laughs> puffs. I don't know if that's the right 
word, short pigtails. <laughs> and uh, so far, I think this feather is starting to look okay. The, the other one is not finished. So there is a lot to work in circles to um, to put you know as much uh, that here I have to put some lighter uh, parties because. It, it looks less pop, popped out than the knees and this is in the front and yeah generally that's that's basically the progress and I I was itchy because this is my sketch from Japan I saw the guy and uh, I drew him so uh, when uh, my boyfriend was looking at that sketch he uh, said why don't you put something more in action why is it just one character and blah blah, blah. Uh, I also wanted to do some, um, as I mentioned probably before, I wanted to do some background, some uh, buildings, and that's also what I'm gonna try, I hope. But for this one, he just told me a story, you know, he's a great storyteller, um, and that's in his nature, I guess. And I just, what, the moment he, he told two sentences, he finished his two sentences explaining this character, Basically, uh, I just imagined entire scene with kids who are so impatient and waiting in Takeshita Street to get their cotton candy, um, rainbow cotton candy, and uh, uh, and there is a pancake store behind. And the, the the sketches were so rough, but tomorrow when I looked at it, it was late at night. I was so tired. Um, I knew I needed to add the lady that is selling it. And uh, this is kind of like a background, but I wanted to go for them make a little bit to play with the space and just uh, make this flat. But then children are going from this side and blah blah blah. And I'm very scared using arch paper. This takes too long. I just want to finish the, the isolation vlog, but yeah, that's um, yeah, that's me. So uh, I, I'm so afraid of using. I have. I'll show you. So. This paper I've I've, I've been um, watching <laughs> um, and not starting to use it for a long time. Then I did ink for uh, 1000 to give him uh, some kind of um, uh, gratitude gift for everything he did, does for community, our community on YouTube. Uh, I just feel so grateful that uh, hardworking people like him are present on YouTube and. Um, this is just different texture this is more rough and it, you can feel that you can do more here than when it's like a little bit more rough and it's different glaze totally different it's clear from then but Arsha's uh, is very delicate and it's um, how to say you can feel when you touch it that you can hurt it I don't know how to explain else but Nevertheless, I just said to myself, it's a paper, you can use one to try everything and why not to try the hardest thing ever and draw all of the kids and the lady and the guy and just um, try and uh, on the other hand here is something like a scene, super long vertical scene that it will be for from Shinjuku, um, hopefully. So, but because I didn't need this part, maybe I'll try this first. But I wanted to sketch uh, in details this, these two stores in the background, and I think these kids look so far. I don't know. I just, I just enjoy working. But tomorrow I will be more smart, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, thanks for um, thanks for watching. It's end of this uh, long weekend of isolation and. It was very productive, on the other hand, I have to return to commissions, to my commission work, so I'm not, um, I'm already late with some things. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope um, I will just move on and keep doing things that I like because it's, it's a great pleasure and I suggest that whenever you're busy just give hour to a day if you can and I know in many cases I don't even <laughs> have that time to use even one hour um, 
so if you can just give yourself a little bit uh, breathing moments and sketch something I just enjoy even rough sketching all the things that are not commissions that just um, go out from my mind or the references from Japan for example if you're inspired by something it can be nature it can be your garden whatever it is just draw and it will be so <laughs> it will be so interesting so yeah um, thanks for watching bye bye